You kind of want to have just a little bit of resistance. You can feel it just catching. Okay, now we go to the other side, do the same thing. This is tight, I don't have a lot of room in my garage. So this jack, I can do quarter pumps. So that's another thing I forgot to mention. Is this thing's really good in uh, in uh, tight spaces. So let's get that board set ready to go. Jack it up a little. It should just slide under. There you go. So you're gonna do that both sides, just like that. Get a jack stand like this, two of these. You're gonna want to uh, always support on jack stands when you jack okay. up the vehicle. I got another two more of these. And you get the idea. You can just keep going back and forth and then keep going up and jacking that sucker up as high as you want. Okay, we're looking underneath the vehicle right now. That's that's where the jack's placed. That's my little adapter. So Let's see here. Let's, let's drop that down a little. Here's the tire, obviously. There's that control arm, that ball joint there. Okay, I think you can see it now. Okay. See where those still two pieces of metal meet? That bar there, that's double metal. That's where you want to put your jack stand. Right there. You don't want to put it on here, or on here, or over here, or anywhere over here. There's only one spot. Right there. Let's zoom in a little more. That metal folds behind that metal and doubles up. You got about an inch and a half a spot to put the, the jack stand. So that's where you put it. If you're jacking up the... Uh, the rear so and here there's the one marking actually there's the one marking there's the second marking and behind those two right there you can see the reinforced box right there that's where the jack that's where my adapter went right in there like Okay, like so now when you have it jacked up, you're going to switch your jack angle and bring it on an angle. Not directly like this with the car, but bring it out. And the reason why is your jack stand. You see how close that this wheel is to the jack stand? You're going to need the clearance to go underneath the yeah. vehicle. There we go. Actually, I'll just take the jack right out of there. I'm going to show you a close up here. That's where your jack stand is placed. Where it's double metal. And that'll be safe. And that vehicle. That board can come out. But for the sake of safety we're going to leave the board in until we jack the other side up and put it on the jack stand. And then we'll move both boards. So. That's where you place the jack stands on each side. So you do one side first, then you go do the other side. So anyway, I don't know if you guys knew that how to do that, but just thought I'd show you. Okay, guys. So there you go. The tires off there. Jack stands up where I showed you. Tires on there, off there, and the jack stands where I showed you. Now I left the jack in place on one side. I always leave the jack in place. While you're working underneath the vehicle, let's uh, take a look. There's the boards. Okay. See the out of the way. There you go. That's where you want to play. You don't want to touch it up against the control arm. And you want it on the same spot on the other side. And just like I said, jack it up and then position your jack. 
on an angle just slowly take your time and then because the jack stand needs to get directly under there there you go so that's how you properly jack up the rear part of this vehicle okay so we got the rim off now if you have the Hyundai hubcaps they're gonna be on get rid of the bolts first then the hubcap comes off um, total one millimeter if you don't have a uh, impact socket take these off loosen them up before you jack the car up but since I have an impact we're gonna take these four bolts off we're gonna take four both sides off both tires off and then we'll continue so that this will be spinning if you have your emergency brake on make sure you uh, make sure it's uh, off that's why we chalk the front wheels so you get yourself a screwdriver like this it's got a star on it as you see one doesn't have a bolt and one side does which you can see right there put that in there you undo that screw okay now we got tires off uh, just want you to get an idea of you feel that resistance you're going to want to spin it around before you take it off because when you readjust the uh, rear drums you're going to want to have just a little bit of resistance you can feel it okay, just so let's catching. take this off right now I don't know if this is going to come off easy or not, but we'll find out. Oh, look at that, eh? Just like butter. It will, it will not come out that easy if uh, you forget the anti-seize. See the gray anti-seize on there? You want to put your bolts in a dish so you don't lose them. So let's, let's uh, see what happens with the drum here. Oh, look at that, eh? No, no mallet needed. Take that out just like yeah, that. This is what I mean by having yourself a uh, magnetic dish. Keep all your bolts uh, in one safe place so you don't lose them. And uh, let's see here. Uh, this is what I use. It's a rubber mallet. They have orange ones. They're like plastic. They do the same thing. I'm just going to hit it here. Ting, 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 ting. And the, the drum should come off. Now, if you service your brakes every year and follow my videos, this will never happen. This will never seize. You will get your drum off just as easy as I put it on. So, so that's just a little tip. You'll notice, see how there's a little bit of gray here? What I do is I don't put anti-seize on the threads. I put them on the base around the plate here, just a little bit. That also helps the uh, inside of the drum. See how there's a little bit of anti-seize? That helps it come off easier too. That's a little trick. Uh, you do that on all your brakes. Don't put too much on it. It's leaking all over the place. But just, just a little bit, you know. That's what that gray stuff is. Helps get it off the next time you uh, have to do this job. Okay, before we get started spraying this down with brake cleaner. You always want to spray your parts down with brake cleaner before you start. Um, that would include spraying all of this. Put a drip pan underneath, spraying out all this brake dust in the drum, which there is none right now. So it's it's pretty cold out here. It's winter. It's kind of like procrastinate making these videos because who wants to sit in the garage in the freezing weather? Get yourself some safety glasses. Don't matter what brand. And get yourself some of this. This is a, just masks. Keep the crap out of your lungs. You don't want to be breathing uh, brake cleaner in or brake dust. It's not good for your health. So, so since we got the tire off, see, see that right there? That's the piece I was talking about. That's double reinforced on each side. Of body. Not on the control arm because uh, this this bar here that goes this way. That's do not play. Do not jack up there either. Um, you can damage that, dent it, and the only thing that connects the suspension is uh let me just show you here the spring the shock comes down sits underneath the plate at the bottom holds this on goes to the control arm that's it that's all the suspension right consists of on the rear so this is your uh oh let's see here wheel cylinder this line here brake hose runs into there down underneath there that's where you that's where you place your jack stand and like I said, you always keep your jack. I keep my jack in place. And even if you have to jack it up and then adjust your jack on an angle so you can get your jack stand in there, just take your time. You can do it. It's, it's not too hard to do. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to spray this down with brake cleaner. 
And once we're done that, we'll continue. Okay, as you see here is a diagram of the uh, break drum. We're going to measure inside diameter. What you're going to do is uh, we're going to check for contaminant lines of the drums, uh, which can reduce stop inability. You're going to want to chalk the front wheels before you raise the car, as shown earlier. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, this is a diagram of a veneer caliper measurement tool. You're going to need a tool like this to measure the inside diameter. And what you're going to do is this is the Hyundai spec for the diameter measurement of the inside of the drum. You're going to measure from these points from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. This is the proper way to measure the inside of the drum for the rear on a 2009 Hyundai Accent 1.6 liter. Okay, as you see here, there's a picture of the wheel, wheel cylinder. Um, you're going to want to check between points 1 and 2 for any leaking. You can lift the boots back on each side gently, and uh, there should be no brake fluid leaking from the wheel cylinder. Um, let's see here, the, uh, if you're going to replace the wheel cylinder, this is for information only, uh, the blue markings 1 and 2 are the screws behind the back plate, 9.45 to 12.36 foot-pounds of torque to put it back on. All the bleeder screws are 5.09 to 9.45 foot-pounds. It suggests you use a closed socket to remove, to undo the bleeder screw and then put an open wrench on it to bleed your brakes if you're going to undo the bleeder screw. Do not use an open wrench first. You'll strip the threads on the, on the bleeder screw. So that's just a little tip that I thought I'd uh, share with you. Okay, as you see here, we have a close-up of a brake shoe. We're going to show you how to check the brake shoe properly. Um, according to the Hyundai spec, the standard limit is 3.9 to 4.5 millimeters. If it gets below 1.0 millimeters, you're going to replace the brake shoes. You're going to measure from this, this point right here. Do not include the metal piece at the bottom of the shoe, only the actual pad surface. And you're going to want to inspect for cracking, glaze, wear, contamination. If you see any of these on the, on the surface, you need to replace your, uh, your brake shoes. And they have to be done in pairs on both sides of the vehicle on the rear. Okay, now if your brake line thickness is less than the serviceable limit, Replace the brake shoes as a set. That's important. This means a set like here and here. Um, check the bearings in the hub unit for smooth operation. If uh, it requires service and replace it, rotate the hub right here and listen for metal on metal sound or any movement. Uh, look for gre grease leaking inside here. Um, a bad bearing will make a jet engine wah noise when you're driving. Um, bearings work in reverse usually, so if you hear the sound coming from the right, it usually means it's the left bearing. You can order the hub bearing with or without ABS option. Uh, both sides are universal. Both items include a complete hub bearing as one unit as well as the wheel lug nut mail bolts that hold on the tire on. These things here. The ABS version has a tone, has a ring of teeth that the sensor reads for the ABS system. The non ABS system does not. So there's like a, when it rotates, there's a ring inside, and the laser or the sensor hits the ring, and when it detects the rotation, it's the, uh, the computer uh, determines the ABS breaking based upon that ring. There's one on the front too. Okay, so. the first thing you want to do is, uh, I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to get some light in there. Right there, that's your adjuster. See the little teeth on that thing? You're going to take a screwdriver, you're going to adjust it until the, uh, let's zoom out here. And you're going to adjust it to bring the shoes in. And this will take pressure off this spring here. And what we're going to do is you're going to grab a pair of needleless pliers. Let me get the pliers here. And you're going to grab the spring, pull it out up and in and remove this spring here first. This is the first step. Now please note the orientation of the spring. You see the square piece is facing out. So when you put this back in, make sure that piece is facing this direction. And if you're not too sure before you start doing this stuff, take a picture of it 
and then refer to the picture on how it all goes back together. So that way you don't make a mistake putting it back together. And you wonder what this stuff is here? These are the braced points. This is the anti seize. So it's part of the brake service yearly. You gotta grease those contacts. So let's get that spring off right now. Okay, as you see in the diagram here, the two blue dots are where the clips are. You're gonna to need to remove those pins. And then the assembly will come away from the back plate. And up at the right corner, you see the yellow dots. You're gonna grease anti seize these contacts and I'll prevent brake squeaking. This is part of a general service, uh, a brake yearly brake service. So if you want to do any, uh, change your brake shoes, then you're going to take apart the springs and everything. But that's all you need to do if you're just going to clean your brakes. Okay, so you take a screwdriver, you're going to pull up on here to release it. And you can take your other screwdriver on the teeth. If you can see this on camera. And then you're just going to Pull up like this. It's the only way you're going to get the spring off. As you do this, you bring the adjuster all the way in. Now I'll pull the brake shoes in. There you go. Just like that. Let it down. Now these shoes are now are in closer. Now we can get at, see all the tension off that spring. It's important because if you don't, you're never going to get that spring off. The other notch. Now this is the important part. One side of the adjuster, the shorter part with the wheel, there's a groove there. It goes in, grooves, goes down, grooves again, and goes around, and then it hooks in. This part has to be, this is, this, this isn't universal, so this part has to be on this piece. You'll see it. Let's see if I can zoom in a little more here. Goes in like this, grooves, hooks around here, and then around the plate, around the brake shoe, and around the back. Okay, so we're going to show you how to remove this really quick. It's pretty easy. Your finger behind there, you'll feel it, the pin. Now grab this. You're gonna need a pair of uh you need a screwdriver. Now you're gonna just press down on here. So we're gonna actually I don't even think you need to do that. We just twist this here. And the shoe will hold it, the clip, so it won't move. There we go, just like that. And then just out comes the clip, like that. And just leave that in there for now. Put the clip aside, lay it out on a table or somewhere where you can easily access it. Now, the adjuster just fell out as you saw, which is this piece right here. There's the adjuster. Like I said, you see the you see the notch? It's got to go in that way, and that notch has got to go in that way. I believe I have to go look at this side. I didn't see that side referenced, but you'll see the grooves. Uh, they're the same on each side, so it's important it's installed the same way. So we're going to lubricate this in a second. Let's put this aside. Now this here. Obviously is the pin shoe hold down bolt. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this spring here. Let me get a pair of pliers so I can reach in there. There you go, just lift that up like that. Take that spring out. It hooks around right down there. You unhook it just like that. And that's how you're going to put it back in. Just like that. You can take that and put that piece over on our parts table. Now you have this piece here. 
that just comes out like that if it's in that hole there and it goes in this way and I take that out and we're gonna place that up beside where we uh, on our on the ground there now next thing we need to do is now we can safely remove the other clip so let's get change the camera angle there and show you the other where's the other clip on the other side so the same idea you take it pliers turn it towards you it's going to hold the clip if i can get the turn there there you go just like that easy pie get that clip out like that and there's the clip now we got to take out the uh, pins you just slide right out just behind I can see you can see that now slide that pin out it's the same on the and other side the other pin right there push it in pull it out the other side just like that place that down there are clips now the shoes should open up. Uh, come out just like that. Now let's zoom out a little more. Okay, just like that. Now this is the spring that holds them together. Pretty common sense. You got to remove that. So let's remove that right now. There's your one shoe spring off place our spring up by our table now this one here Parts. is our emergency brake this is the lever the latch and below here is the emergency brake cable just right down here and I'm gonna zoom in real quick Let's see if I can get a better shot okay, so I just put the camera down on the ground there to show you this there's the brake cable hooks around the bottom of the brake shoe what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a. Uh, it should come out. There we go. Just like that. Pull back on this spring. Hooks back in there. Just like that. There so, you go. You're gonna lay out your parts. Just like that. Now if you buy new shoes, this piece comes already with the new shoe. You can't take this bolt off. Some other companies, you gotta take that lever off and put on a different one. But this one here, it's uh, that's riveted on there. So there's no way you're getting that off. So there you go, that's how you take apart your brakes. Okay, let's get some light on there. Okay, this is the back plate with the brakes off. Now normally, if you just do the brake surface, you don't take all those springs off. But I'm just showing those for educational purposes. The uh, These parts here, these are the tabs that are going to be one right here, that's one right there, right there, and one right there. You can put anti-seize or brake synthetic brake silicone on those parts. And these are the on the back plate so the reason why you do this is because the metal rubs the shoes against these spots and it can make some squeaking noises when you're breaking it also prevents these from wearing through the metal so you don't have to replace your back plate Nail on those pliers, pull the spring back. That in in there like that. See the washer there? You can make sure that washer's pushed out with the spring. And then it's gonna latch in there. Make sure that the washer is okay. What you're gonna do is uh see right here. How you want it installed you see there's a washer right there 
That goes around like that. The shoes like that. That's how you want it installed. And you just go like this. Turn around like this. And then the shoe tucks, tucks in just like okay, so that. So we have this brake pad on. The brake cable. Just like I showed you. This, this latch here goes zoom in there real quick. See if you can see that. Make sure that goes into the groove right there. And into that notch there. Just like that. Fits your right pin in. Pin holder. Your pin bolt and your clip. You insert the bolt through the back. Like so. Let's zoom out there and show you. Right there. Then you take your clip. There you go. Just like that. Make sure that's sitting flush in there. See how move it around there? See how it's flush? That's important as well. So that's how you do the right side. Now we're gonna do the uh, this side. We're gonna hook our spring on, run our shoe around, and start connecting all the hardware there. Okay, so now we have, uh, we're looking at this side. Here's our other shoe. This is very important you install this right. See how that spring's installed? On the other side, the spring's on the opposite side coming out, but on the end, this one, it's on the inside. So the spring hooks down, back, behind. I have another spring here. Around. This one. These loops go on the outside. So let's look at the bottom. Hook it on there on the outside and hook it on the opposite side on the, on the other shoe as well. Down around and then run the shoe around like this across. And then you're going to put that spring there, the adjuster lever. Okay, I just brought the camera down here to show you something. The spring here is going to go behind this little piece of metal right here. And hook on to the other shoe. Do not go in front of it, go behind. your adjuster. Now your adjuster, you're going to want to unscrew this just like that. There really isn't much to it. You're going to want to clean all this out, spray it out. Take the adjuster thread, remove it all the way, back it off. Like so. Now you want to use synthetic brake lubricant in here. You do not want to use anti-seize. So that's just uh, should back off. Then you're gonna put some grease, clean up these threads, nice and clean, and then put some brake uh, synthetic brake grease in here. And let's show you what it looks like. And they're like that. And they're like that. And then your adjuster goes here. And over here on the other shoe, there's another notch. It fits in there. But the other side of the adjuster, which is this piece, make sure it's facing out like this. And it fits in like that. That goes behind here. When that's locked in and the spring's installed, And that spring's put in there. You bring it around like this. You're gonna put your whole pin back through here. And then you're gonna install right. your clip. There's the other part. Hooks are facing towards you. It's gonna hook into there. 
just right there. Just like that. Go around. Before we do that, I gotta clean off the adjustment screw, which is this thing here. I'm gonna clean up and then I'm gonna lubricate the threads. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll continue. Okay, so I just took the uh, brake synthetic, it's purple uh, brake lubricant, pulled the thread out. That's all lubricated in there. Nice. There we go, I'll do it up. Just like that. So there you go. It's all nice and clean. Notches are facing on the outside like that. We're going to install it like that. Okay, so let's do this in one quick step. All your pieces are separate. Hook the spring on the bottom, hook it on there. That's the first step. Second step is to have your adjuster here. Take that out. Take your clip. Insert it like that into there. Put your spring in. Remember what I said about the spring facing on the outside? Like that. So, just bring it around there like that, hook it on there, bring it down, you guys are going to get frustrated if you do this the first time because it is a pain in the ass to get everything all back in order. Guys who make these videos make it look easy, but you know what? It's not that easy. Okay, so. There you go. That's on there like that. You gotta hold that with your hand because it's gonna fall out. Put your adjuster in like that. Lock it in. Bring the bar all the way around. The pad. Make sure it goes underneath the metal piece under here. If I can show you, under there, hooks under and around. And I just could insert it in, in like this. And I can't see jack shit. Ugh, fuck. Let's turn on my studio light here. There we go. Part faces out, same direction as the other side. Locks in just like that. And then this locks in. Oh, we're a little rough camera here. This locks in here, in here, in the groove there, just like that. And that's all together. Now that's all together, insert a pin, which is right here, under hole at the back here, insert a pin, Okay, as you see here is a close-up of the wheel cylinder right here, the uh, left brake shoe, the upper return spring, the adjuster which is behind it, the adjuster arm or, or uh, latch, and that runs right across there, and it connects to a wheel right there. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, step one, is to install the spring into the little hole right there. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but you can get it done. It's not too hard to do. You saw how I took it out. Step two, you're going to want to pull with a screwdriver this latch right here, this arm, this way, like shown in when I first took it off and I backed off the adjuster. You're going to want to reverse the step. And then you're going to put another screwdriver in right here on the teeth 
and you're going to go in a down direction. As you go down, it's going to force the brake pads out. And I'll show you with the arrows. There you go. So hold this down, turn down like that, and the brake shoes will come out like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to do this in uh, small increments. Put the brake drum back on. Uh, check for the uh, brake drag. Take the drum off. Adjust a little more until you get the proper brake drag like you did before we took the brake drum off at the beginning of the video. The reason why I had you do that was to get a feel for what, what I mean by brake drag. So, And if you're not, if you don't get these uh, measurements accurate, uh, you can always pull, um, put the car into reverse. Hit the brakes and it'll automatically adjust this adjuster for you to the proper adjustment. So anyway, we're going to show you a quick video on what I mean, how to do this, and then we're going to wrap this video up. Let me zoom in here and show you. You pull out like this with one screwdriver. Pull out and then up. Uh, there's a reason for that, and I'll show you in a second. There, just like that. There you go. Okay, now you can see it. There you go, right there. Here's your adjustment wheel. You want to make sure that this lever is latched into those teeth. That's very important, because when you're adjusting, let me get back here again and show you. When you're adjusting this wheel here, it's going to click up against this bar. That spring is going to hold it. But before that, we got to pull these shoes out here like this and grease behind those raised edges right in there behind. You're going to put anti seize. And then uh, now, normally, to make this simple here, if you're going to do a brake service and not replace your shoes, what I showed you today was to replace the shoes. All you're going to do is take this pin out here, this pin out here, lift the mechanism and grease behind the contacts. And that's it. And then put it back together and you're done. But I'm, I just thought I'd show you users on how to do the shoes as well and the springs. So this has become a longer video, but the rears would be a lot easier if I didn't have to replace the shoes so unfortunately my light is running out here I don't have any more batteries so I'm gonna have to make this quick so I'm gonna put the anti seize behind here first and then I'm gonna put the pin lock pin there with the clip and then that's it we're pretty much done and then all you gotta do is right down here Get the light in there. You're going to take this adjustment wheel and you're going to adjust it. Click, 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 click. And you're going to take your drum. You're going to put it on, and then you're going to move, move it around. And you should just feel it just drag just a little bit. When that's, when that's done, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, when you start the vehicle and you put the tires back on, you're going to pull the emergency brake, and that'll set your shoes to come out and then what you can do is you're gonna back uh, once you pull out in the driveway put it in reverse and when you put it in reverse back up a little and then hit the brakes and by doing that it'll it'll recess these shoes and this adjuster will adjust automatically and your brakes will be set perfect so anyway thank you for watching the uh, video on how to do the rear brakes in the front the front video there uh, it's also on my website if you haven't seen that one and uh, this should be done yearly because the uh, debris builds up in here and will wear out your uh, brakes quicker so and like I said if you're not too sure about the springs and how they go look at the other side because uh, they're all together as a reference point so that way you know if you're not too sure you can uh, figure it out so anyway please subscribe leave a comment and look for more videos come in the future so you guys have yourself a good day.